you know, you said that paying attention to certain details. So I mm. thought we could actually test how well you pay attention oh, to these man. details. How well? I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm done. I have to get back to studying English because I you know. Yeah. So I'm joined here in the Globe Studio by the one and only Axel Pose, aka Thiago. How's it going, Thiago? Hey Ethan, I'm doing well. Thank you. How's it going? Uh, if you watch today's episode until the end, today's lesson, you are going to learn how to understand 100% of what natives say, just like Chago here has learned to do. You will learn what zombies have to do with learning English, and finally, some wisdom from a very famous pirate. But before we get into any of that, we want to let you know that if you are new here, every single week we make new lessons like this one that help you to go from being a lost insecure English learner to become a confident and natural English speaker. So if that sounds like something that you want for your English, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell on below, and that way you won't miss a single new lesson. Thiago, so I've had a lot of students who, you know, pretty much all of them get frustrated at one point or another because they feel lost when they listen to native speakers at normal speed if they don't have subtitles, you know. And actually, if this is the case for you if you're listening and that's the case for you, then if you're not already, you might want to try listening to the podcast on a real life app because you have an interactive transcript so you can follow along and that's really going to help you to not get lost. But anyways, I know that I've observed that you have really no issues or very, very rarely have issues understanding natives at full speed. So I was wondering if you could let our audience know what's your secret? <laughs> the secret. Well, first of all, thanks for the compliment. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I would say that for me, Ethan, understanding native English, right? Um, it comes down to two things, right? Listening to a lot of English over the years. And I've always had that habit of listening to movies and series back in the day. Nowadays, I listen to podcasts as well, listening to a lot of music. So I've been doing that for many, many years now. So it kind of yeah. compounds, yeah? If you do that a lot every day over the course of many years, it compounds, so you get better and better. So listening to a lot of English was definitely a part of it. But a second point, and most importantly, is whenever I listen to something in English, a native speaker speaking, for example, I always pay attention to specific things. You know, there are certain specific things that I always pay attention to as I'm listening. So I would say these two points have helped me to, you know, have good listening skills. So before we move on, I did want to ask you, you used an interesting word there, compound. Something mm. compounds, what does that mean? Uh, it gets bigger and bigger or larger and larger, especially as time mm -hmm. passes. Uh, this is a very common word in investing, for example. When talking about Correct. investing your money, let's say you invest in some stocks, they pay dividends, mm -hmm. and then, uh, you know, if you keep investing over the course of 10, 15, 20 years, your money compounds that either compound interest mm -hmm. or you know uh so yeah something that grows uh as time passes yeah it stacks right. up right on t one yeah, yeah. it's thing like an exponential other. curve even you know of, of how it how it grows so that's really great and you know you said that paying attention to certain details so i mm. thought we could actually test how well you pay attention oh, to these man. details how well and so we're going to have our producer who's in the studio with us the one and only Ice T, we like to call him T around the office. <laughs> share share the clip with us. So let's roll that. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure is killing me. Witness and like in the lambs and always in the sheep. Just count just count out a nice bit of money, like to be done about it, nothing. So Chiagra, <laughs> what did you understand one hundred percent of that? I mean, <laughs> you know what? I'm done. I have to get back to studying English because I you know yeah, uh, my listening skills are not as good as I thought. <laughs> so it's okay. I, I didn't understand that either. <laughs> I have no idea what he's saying. It is English, apparently. It but is, it's like right? a very, uh, like a dialect from rural Ireland. So obviously uh -huh. that was just a joke. Uh, <laughs> even for most natives, I think if you're not from Ireland... It's probably near impossible to understand. I think I heard the word sheep somewhere in there. But yeah. we actually... Now looking at the title of the, the video helped also. I saw, I saw, I saw there, that missing helps, yeah. sheep. Context. Okay, he's talking about sheep. That's it. <laughs> it's a good, a good lesson, right? Is, is use the context that you have available. 
Absolutely, yeah. So you, you look for verbal clues or, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, you make some predictions. Yeah, because I know sometimes they don't understand 100% per se, right? Uh, but you can mm -hmm. use certain devices to help you make sense of what's being said. Yeah, exactly. So now we have an actual real test and uh, <laughs> got this from the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, which I'm sure that, you know, you and I would have no trouble understanding him. It's an mm -hmm. American accent, although it is, uh, you know, like uh, could be a, considered a difficult American accent, especially, you know, for someone who has more intermediate uh, mm -hmm. or even advanced English could have some trouble understanding it. So let's mm -hmm. watch that. And then Thiago is going to let us know how he understood it. Okay. You know what, actually this works out better for me. You know, the Slimmies of Summer come to class wearing next to nothing, you know what I'm well, saying? Well, it's all right to be angry. Hey, why should I be mad? I'm saying, at least he said goodbye this time. I just wish I hadn't wasted my money buying this stupid present. I'm sorry, I, you know, if there was something that I hey, could Hey, you do. know what, you ain't got to do no, nothing, Uncle Phil. Hey, you know, ain't like I'm still five years old, you know? Ain't like I'm gonna be sitting up every night asking my mom, when's daddy coming home, you know? Who needs him? Hey, he wasn't there to teach me how to shoot my first basket, but I learned, didn't I? All right, that, that was much better. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So do you want to, just to prove that you actually understood this, do you want to just like kind of paraphrase what that, it was a pretty short clip, but what it was about? Yeah. Yeah. Just paraphrasing quickly here, uh, Will's character. Yeah. Uh, he's expressing his frustration with the fact that apparently his dad is absent. Yeah. He, mm -hmm. uh, he lives with his uncle, yeah, Uncle Phil, and uh, he's expressing this frustration that apparently the father doesn't really care about him or doesn't try to get in touch with him. And he even bought a present, mm -hmm. I guess, because I think he was hoping to to see the father in person, but you know, he never bothered to show up. So yeah, he's angry, yeah. And he speaks in a very peculiar way, I would say, mm -hmm. which is kind of, I think in the series, uh, he's from Philadelphia. Yeah? So you know, he's a street right. kid from Philadelphia. So there's a lot of slang there, but the idea mm -hmm. is pretty much that, yeah. I mean, uh, he is expressing his frustration uh, about his um, absent father, yeah. Perfect. So, you know, you and I don't have too many issues understanding that, even though there's some old slang in that clip. Like, for example, he said the word slimmies, which yeah. I, I can't that say I didn't that quite I get. recall anyone saying that. But yeah. uh, I, what does that I mean, assume by the way? from the context, I assume from the context that he's talking about like girls, you know, uh, mm. he's talking about like slimmies down at the beach or something like that. Mm. So, right. Yeah, but why is it that a lot of learners might have felt a bit lost there, you know, if they didn't have mm. subtitles? Yeah, uh, it might be worth maybe uh, playing it again, uh, so certain parts. Mm -hmm. But what I can say now is uh, he uses a lot of ain't, the word mm -hmm. ain't, which is a, a slang word, yeah? And uh, he does some things, for example, he reduces the preposition to, to a da, yeah? Mm -hmm. I forgot exactly what he was saying, but I, I think it was something like trying to do something, trying to do something. He goes like that, mm -hmm. trying to, trying to, e e even a na or a da, yeah, depending on the word that that precedes. Uh, he also uh, reduces the age for him. So there, mm -hmm. there's a part that I remember that instead of saying him, he says him. I don't know if it was about him or to him. Yeah, instead of about mm -hmm. him or to him. Who needs him? And, but yeah, there are certain connected speech patterns there that he uses, which... Mm -hmm. If you're not familiar with as a learner, you will struggle uh, to understand that segment because he also speaks quite fast because remember, he's frustrated. He's emotional, so right? He's emotional, yeah. So mm -hmm. he's speaking fast, using slang and disconnected speech patterns there. So yeah, uh, that's why it can be tricky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, you mentioned like ain't, for example. And the mm -hmm. thing with ain't, if it's followed by what we'd call the function word. So like you said, mm -hmm. like to is a function word or of is a function word the T can even drop and the ain't can connect to the next word. So if you said like, um, ain't no mountain high I don't know, for example, ain't nothing. Nothing's actually, I think is a content word, but like the, the first syllable could be reduced. So it'd be like, ain't nothing, ain't nothing. And mm. those, the T is gone, the ends linked together and everything. So, mm. you know, a lot of things like that are happening that if you become more familiar with some of these different connected speech patterns, mm -hmm. your brain would be able to process that because you kind of have like yeah. the, the puzzle pieces you need. But if you're not familiar with those, then you're just going to feel lost. It might even sound almost yeah. like another language, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I think connected speech is such a huge deal here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you know, if you combine 
listening to English every day, yeah? And that idea of compounding, right? The more you listen to it, the better your listening skills get with deliberately learning about and studying connected speech. And that's exactly what we do, right? I mean, uh, in our Learn English with TV channel, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. most of what we teach there is related to connected speech. So learning these patterns um, is going to definitely help you uh, better understand native speakers. And uh, I think this clip that we just uh, listened together, Yeah, is also a good uh, example of you don't have to speak exactly as you hear someone, a native speaker, in this case, speaking, mm -hmm. right? Because you know, in my case, for example, I would never speak like Will Smith in this clip. I would never speak like no, that. I. <laughs> yeah, that's not how I, I view myself speaking English, right? But, mm -hmm. you know, I have my own way of speaking English, my, my influences, right? But I'm still able to understand pretty much all of it. Right. So being mm -hmm. able to understand doesn't mean that you have to necessarily speak like that person you're listening to unless you want to. Yeah. Unless you want to sound mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So as Thiago mentioned, we help you to do exactly this on our Learning English with TV series channel. And that's one of the most fun ways that you can do it. And in fact, the reason that I thought about this clip is because we did a lesson with it. It was a long time ago. But, you know, if you're a fan of Will Smith, The Fresh Prince, if you want to better understand that clip we just watched, then, you know, you can check that out. We'll link it down in the description below, in the show notes as well. And one thing that Thiago mentioned before, too, that's really important is like creating this own immersion experience for yourself. There's an expression we say in English that if you don't use it, you lose it. And this is very true for languages. You know, if you're not constantly using it, if you're not constantly immersing yourself, even if you can't go live in the country, just like Thiago's never lived in the States, never lived in the UK, um, But if you can create your own immersion experience by Thiago was explaining to me the other day, for example, that he had to do some some spring cleaning and he listened to an entire audio book because, you know, he was cleaning for for several hours. So it's like things like this that you can find all these different convenient ways to create your own immersion experience where you're just listening to hours and hours of English, even without living in a country where it's the native language. Uh, and this whole thing about, you know, don't use it, you lose it. It's really important because, you know, if you're not constantly keeping it sharp, then, you know, it might be like you become a zombie. And speaking <laughs> of zombies, <laughs> I've heard uh, people are like talking all about this new series, right? The The Last of Us. I'm curious, Chaga, have you, have you caught any episodes of that yet? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I have been watching it. Uh, it's been on HBO Max every Sunday. And uh, mm -hmm. there are three episodes out. And uh, yeah, I've been watching. I've seen the three of them. And, you know, I play the games. Yeah, I'm a fan of the games. Yeah, I think the games are really well made. I so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's based on a game. It is. Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> Super popular game from PlayStation. Yeah, so. Oh, I'm really out of the loop with this. I've never been really a big fan of like the whole zombie genre. Can I stop you here very quickly? Because, you know, you just said I'm out of the loop, right? First of all, the definition. Now, what does it mean to be out of the loop? If you're out of the loop, it means you're not informed about something. You haven't been mm. following that thing. You're not current with a certain trend or certain, uh, I don't know, pop mm -hmm. culture information. Yeah. So that's definitely <laughs> the case of, for me with uh, yeah. this series. And the second point that I wanted to bring up is the connected speech that you used there, right? You said Ooh. out of the loop, right? So out of the loop, yeah. You that's say like one. out of the loop. You didn't say it like that, right? Can you repeat how you mm -hmm. said it? Out of the loop. Out of the loop. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, for the listeners out there or for our viewers, it's important for you to pay attention to this. If you have the opportunity to talk to a native speaker, like I'm talking to Ethan right now, he's American, or if you're watching something, yeah, uh, pay attention mm -hmm. to how people say things. Yeah. It's about recognizing this pattern. So, oh, if he said out of the loop, out of becomes out of, maybe I can use out of in other sentences and other situations mm -hmm. too. Out of the loop, out of the place, out of the... And then you you work on it like that, right? So uh, mm -hmm. it's important for you to pay attention Those to this word stuff, chunks, right? right? Uh, sorry, yeah, I digress a little bit here uh, now. Yeah. So could you please uh, say what you were saying about The Last of Us and being out of the loop? It was a very appropriate digression. No, I was just <laughs> saying that I'm not a huge fan of like the whole zombie genre although mm. like a few years back actually now it's probably quite old but <laughs> there was a movie i really enjoyed with woody harrelson called mm. uh zombie land mm. and actually you know maybe we could watch a clip from that and nice. you could we could break down some more connected speech right let's do it yeah sounds fun All right can you roll it t i had to get that out i don't mean to gush 
This is so surreal. I mean, you probably get this all the time. I well, maybe not lately, but I'm I'm such a huge fan of yours. I mean, <laughs> you see, uh, he says something interesting here. Yeah, he says to I think to Bill Murray, uh, I'm such a huge fan of yours. Right at mm. the last part there. So first, I noticed that he doesn't pronounce the H for huge. I imagine that certain areas in the U.S. people don't pronounce yeah. it like that, right? Is that correct? I would say huge, but my dad's from New York, and he says he even he almost says it like there's a Y there, like huge, huge. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's kind this of how, how he says it here, right? Donald Trump says it as well. Mm. Like Donald Trump has the thing with his hands, like he's going to be huge. Huge. Does the same thing. I think that's like a New York thing. It's a huge problem. It has a huge heroin problem. Huge yeah. believer. Huge, huge problem. problem. It's a huge problem. The huge problem. That is a huge problem. And he also says, "I'm a huge fan of yours." So, I am a huge fan of yours. Of mm -hmm. yours, he says, "I'm a huge fan of yours." Fanna, fanna mm -hmm. yours, fanna yours. I think you might have even said fanny yours, right? Like reducing the yours to a year. Fanny ears? Maybe, yeah. F f mm -hmm. Can you say that again? Fanny ears. Fanny ears. Fanny -ears. Fanny -ears. All mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And he said something also at the beginning. Uh, I think I had to get that out, but he spoke very uh -huh. fast that part, right? Maybe maybe we could play that part again because I noticed that too. Yeah. Could you play that again, T? I had to get that out. I don't mean to gush. <laughs> this is so surreal. I mean, you probably get this all the time. I will. Maybe not lately, but I'm I'm such a huge fan of yours. I mean, I swear, you know, I've seen every one of your oh, movies you a million times. <laughs> every one of your movies. <laughs> so there's some other interesting things there, you know. So he's so what we were saying at the beginning there, he says, I had to get that out, which he said really fast. And it's it's kind of we were saying before, uh, outer right. And you mentioned before also with like Will Smith with the reduction of two. So the had to, and this is interesting because it's a D and a T, but oftentimes uh, when we have that happen a D and T together, it's kind of like the D trumps the T, like the T goes away. So it's like I had to, I had to get that out. And then again, you have get and that has like two T's. So those go together, get that, I had to get that out. And mm -hmm. then you have an American T there with the, that out. I had to get that out. I had to get that out. Mm -hmm. And then he says, uh, I don't mean to gush. Do you know what that means, Thiago? I'm going to, I'm going to, Give it a shot here, but I'm not sure. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't mean to gush. I mean, I think when you gush, you um, maybe you show how much of a fan you are uh, mm -hmm. towards a person. Like you know, a, you you fanboy. Is it you is fanboy? Yeah, that's the way of saying or, it. Is that correct? Or if you gush, gush, you're gushing. It's like you're. Uh, I don't know what would you call. You're being a brown noser, maybe as well. You're brown nosing. Mm. That's another way we could say this. Okay. Like you're complimenting someone, but like. A lot, right? Right. Like, oh my God, you're just, which, you know, people might do, they might, you know, gush to like, you could do it, you know, if you're a big fan of someone, of course, mm. but you could also like, maybe you're gushing too much to like your boss or to your, mm. to your teacher or something like that to, okay. uh, to try to, you know, gain some favor or something. Like sucking so up to in them. In general, it's seen as a negative right. thing, right? Okay. So it's a suck up or over complimenting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it reminds me on a tangent that <laughs> we, there used to be a candy probably still exists when I was a kid called Gushers. Okay. And it was like these, um, it was these gummies, gummies, like the kind of like chewy things. We can even maybe show a picture of this with like a liquid inside. Uh, and it's called a gusher because if something gushes, another thing is this, like when you bite into these gummies, they gush, like the liquid would kind of like spurt out. Mm. So that's another use of gush. Just like when a zombie bites you, it gushes blood. <laughs> is that it? Blood gushes out of your brain? Of you? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan, just going back a little bit, uh, you used a nice word there. You said on a tangent, on a tangent, on right? A tangent. What does that mean, on a tangent? Yeah. And earlier before you said digress. So it's the same thing. Mm. You could say that you're digressing. You're saying you're going off on a tangent. That's expression mm. to go off on a tangent. Mm. Or you can say uh, like tangentially speaking. Wow. would be another way to say that. So that you're going off of the, the topic. Mm-hmm. That's But it was really kind cool. of off the topic, but it was related, right? Yeah, we, we made it about the topic. Of a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have our question of the day for you. So let us know if you're watching this on YouTube, let us know down in the comments. If you aren't, you could email us at fluencyteam at realifeglobal.com if you're just listening. And we would love to hear your answer. But uh, our question is, do you think that you would survive long in a zombie apocalypse? And tell us 
why or why not? You know, why would you be able to survive for a long time? Like what resources do you have at hand or mm. what skills do you have that would help you to do that? Or, you know, would you be one of the first people to go? Why do you think that that, that <laughs> is? So we're curious to hear your answer. And it's a way to practice writing your English, right? And some of the vocabulary that we're learning today. All right, so we want to actually bring back this word. We want to gush at one of our fans. Uh, and <laughs> for maybe they were also gushing at us, I don't know. Uh, but with today's shout out, so let's check out who our shout out is for today. All right, the shout out today goes to Yoel or Yoel. And uh, Yoel, I believe, says, the real life English app is the best app I have ever seen. It really works well when it comes to practicing and improving your listening skills. I would recommend it to all learners of the English language. Thank you so much, real life coaches, for your hard work in helping people. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yuel, for gushing about our app, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that you're enjoying the experience there. And dear listener or dear viewer, uh, if you haven't checked it out yet, what are you waiting for? We talked about that you get an interactive transcript, but you're learning a lot of words today as well. So, you know, you'll be able to get vocabulary flashcards so that you never forget them because that's one of the big issues here that we hear from learners is that they, you know, get into conversation and they know that they know a word, but they can't remember it in that moment. They know they've learned it, but it just doesn't come to them. And this is because you haven't, uh, you know, we have like special technology that works the way your memory does so that it becomes long-term memory. And of course, as well, another big problem that a lot of learners say is they don't have enough opportunities to actually use what they're learning. And so it's the only place where by just pressing a button, you can connect to another learner and have a conversation for four to eight minutes. And this is really great because you get to meet people from all around the world that are learning English just like you. And we have one more fan that we want to send. We want to gush at. <laughs> we use that word all day. I think I haven't used that even in a long time, but in line with Woody Harrelson. Uh, who commented on one of our recent lessons. So I'll let you read that, Chago. All right. So uh, this viewer here left us a nice comment. Um, here it goes. Along with Rachel's English YouTube channel, these are the best in the world ever created. Seriously, everything you might be looking for, it's all here packed, all the succulent nutrition that'll kickstart your day in a better way. I admire your channel and especially this video you've touched on proficiency rather than fluency and this was the missing link for me for years. Now I certainly know that I have to immerse myself in this topic so I'm able to pass it on to others. Keep up the good work. Best regards, um, Nazari or Nazari uh, from Ukraine. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nazari. And if we're butchering your name, I'm so sorry. We should have checked before we have a teammate actually who's also from Ukraine. So we could have asked her how to say that correctly, but you could also let us know if we got that wrong. Uh, but okay, Nazari, you obviously have a very ample vocabulary base. So you mentioned um, that, let me read that line again. All the succulent nutrients that'll kickstart your day in a better way. It even sounds like poetry. So <laughs> what does succulent mean, Chiago? I think about it as something juicy, like when talking about food, mm. like a succulent fruit, for example. Uh, it's Maybe something some juicy, right? <laughs> it gushes when you bite into it. <laughs> you know, it seems like gushing is the word of the day today, right? Like, it's all about gushing. I'm sure, our listeners are not going to forget that word. <laughs> Absolutely soon. not. Yeah. And nutrients. If something's full of nutrients, mm -hmm. it's full of vitamins and minerals. You know, all the good things you need to remain healthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if something kickstarts your day, what does that mean to kickstart? I think uh, it starts, you know, to start your day in a uh, productive, energetic way. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you kickstart. Yeah. Like it's kind of a, a quick, exciting or. I believe I that, that yeah. comes from like a motorcycle, right? There's like a, like a kickstart, like a, the ones that you kick, you, you, you start them with like an action with your foot, maybe. Mm. So it's, uh, Kind of like that, but it, right. yeah, but that can you kickstart a car too, line. or not, or just the the bike? I don't think so. Just the bike. <laughs> Maybe if you have like really strong legs, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's like a special like uh, something that I want to say motos because that's what we call them here. Uh, right. Motorcycles have have like mm -hmm. some have a kickstarter. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong there though. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and it's really great too to hear that you know we're one of your favorite channels alongside Rachel's English. We really 
admire Rachel. I've used her a lot in my teaching. I know that her, like all of her content is super valuable for learners. So it is really an honor to be considered in the same league as such an extraordinary teacher and YouTuber. And the podcast, in case people were curious, in case you're this is maybe the first one you're watching or you missed it, we did one, uh, I believe, episode 322. Chago and I talked about this idea of why fluency might not be the best goal for you and why proficiency is actually could be a more uh, powerful goal for you to have, a more effective goal. So if you haven't yet, you might want to check out that episode. We'll link it in the description and in the show notes. And now we have some special wisdom, as promised, from a very famous pirate. So we have our real life way moment. And today we're going to talk about the last component of the Real Life Way, which is activate it. And if you are unfamiliar with what the Real Life Way is, it is our method that, to guide learners to learn English outside of the classroom. So we talked all about this in our last episode of the podcast. If you missed that, it is episode 324. You might want to give that a listen because it can definitely transform the way that you are learning English. But I'm digressing a little bit here. so. What exactly is activating it all about, Thiago? It's about uh, practicing your English in a more deliberate way, in a more intentional mm -hmm. way, maybe more structured way. While uh, living your English is a, is a, is a core uh, part of it, and also connecting it to your goals, to your vision of yourself for the future, you also need that moment where you are a little bit more active, a little bit more proactive mm -hmm. or curious eh, in order to pick up stuff or learn stuff. For example, in this episode, we are talking about how to understand most of what you hear from native speakers. And mm -hmm. part of that is about identifying patterns, paying attention to the patterns of connected speech, of sounds. In order for you to do that, you have to be paying attention in an active way, for example. Yeah, you can't just listen to something for the sake of listening. Yeah, in a passive way. Yeah, you have to be a little bit more interested in it. Like, oh, you said that. I mean, can you say that again? What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Or what sound did you make there? Or if you are alone with a movie or a TV show, for example, pausing, checking it out, or maybe taking notes so that you can ask your English-speaking friend later at another opportunity. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that this topic today, you know, about understanding native English, uh, is very connected to this component of the real life way. Yeah, deliberately activating or listening in this case. Yeah. So exactly what we've been doing today, you know, breaking apart these different scenes and stuff, being curious, going back, watching again and again, mimicking too. We didn't really do that, right? But uh, I mean, it's, it's maybe easier for us to do that. But when you're learning, obviously it's something that you can challenge yourself to do is even listening to this podcast, you know, if maybe there's a certain part that something that Chiago or I said that's interesting, you like the way that we said it, go back and like listen a couple of times, repeat it yourself, try to say it in the same way, like really work out those muscles of articulation. And mm -hmm. that's basically what activating is about is, you know, not just passively sitting on the couch and watching something in English, but actually turning everything that you do into an opportunity to get a little bit better, even if it's just with something really small, like mm -hmm. rewatching a certain part or taking note, like Chiago said. So... Where did pirates come into this, Thiago? <laughs> yeah, actually, I found this really cool quote from Captain Jack Sparrow. And uh, I don't know in which Pirates of the Caribbean movie that was spoken, but the quote goes, mm -hmm. the problem is not the problem. The problem is your attitude about the problem. <laughs> you know? So um, why did I choose that? Because, you know, uh, I hear many learners sometimes complaining about it, like, oh, it's so difficult, it's so hard to understand movies or series or the news or native speakers in general they speak so fast okay that's a problem that you have i get that yeah it is a real challenge right but remember the problem is not that it's not the problem jack sparrow says the problem is your attitude about the problem so try to have a more positive attitude towards it like okay this is not easy for me understanding that but i know i can do it with practice you know and if i dedicate myself you know, to understanding, I will understand, yeah, eventually, mm -hmm. right? So having this more, let's say, um, positive outlook on your learning, yeah, and not be so so negative about it. I think that's the wisdom mm -hmm. that Captain Jack Sparrow is trying to instill in all of us here. Yeah, and I'll just add on that, that, you know, 
a lot of times we're so focused on because we're learning a language, we're really hard on ourselves. So if you really pay attention, even when you're watching something or listening to something in your native language, you don't always understand 100%, especially if you start, if you got in the habit of watching in your native language with subtitles in your native language, you'll start to realize that even in your native language, there's you're not hearing every one of those words, but you're so used to it, you're able to always put together things through the context. Um, and we gave, you know, a couple examples today that like that Irish farmer, like I, I can't understand what he's saying. And, and that's like a very extreme example. But I've talked before about the show Peaky Blinders, for example, like I, I had to watch that show with subtitles. This it's, it's, it's very common, you know, that even when it's your native language, you're not always getting 100 percent or even, you know, when you're with a friend, sometimes you might ask them like, oh, I didn't catch what you said. Could you say that again? So but when we're learning another language, a foreign language, a language that's not our mother tongue, we tend to set very high expectations for ourselves and we're much harder on ourselves when we don't understand something. And it's all a process. And sometimes when you're at the start, you don't have all that experience that you have with your mother tongue and everything. And you're going to feel sometimes, you know, a bit infantile. You're going to feel like a, you know, a baby and everything. You're going to feel, it can feel frustrating, you know, that you're not understanding because it throws you back to like when you were a kid and, you know, you didn't always understand everything. But if you keep at it and you're deliberate, you, you do this kind of like active learning. And, it, you know, I think what we're doing today, you can even like have fun with it. Like going back, oh, what an interesting word gush this guy was using. Or, you know, it's so interesting how he said the word huge. He didn't say the H there. And, you know, just having this kind of curious mindset, you'll have a lot more fun actually improving and, and little by little, you know, the, the greatness is built not in the, the moments, not in the days, but you know, over time, over many, much, much time, just like Jago was saying in the beginning, that he's been doing this for a long time and that's helped him to get to where he is today. So if you start building these good habits, then you'll get there too. But you have to take into consideration that it's step by step. And we have a challenge for you. So let's move into today's daily challenge. <laughs> Tiago, so I'll let you do the honors. What is today's daily challenge? All right, everybody. So the daily challenge we have for you is try to practice this by yourself at home too, you know? So maybe play a little clip of something in English, maybe a movie or TV show, yeah? And uh, try to identify some connected speech patterns, yeah? Just like the examples we listed here today, you know? Maybe this aura or t or da, you know, how the, the function words are reduced, or how some sounds are, are cut. So do that. That's the challenge for you today, okay? Deliberately try to identify some patterns of connection or reduction uh, when you listen to something in English, all right? And then, you know, maybe let us know in the comments. Eh? Come back here later and say, hey, I did that and it was amazing. I noticed this, this, and this connected speech aspect. Yeah? So yeah, we are curious to, to see how it goes for you guys. Yeah. Or if you're just listening, feel free to pop over to the video, leave us a comment, or write us at fluencyteam at reallifeglobal.com. All right. And also, we're going to ask you for one more comment. So if you're watching this, if there's something, you know, if you have some frustration, we did this one because a lot of learners have told us that they have trouble understanding fast native speech. So if you have some big frustration, some big problem, and you'd like us to create a lesson on it, then let us know by commenting down below. Maybe we'll make our next lesson on that. And as always, thanks so much for joining us. Go out there, challenge yourself, activate your learning, be curious about it, have fun, and we'll see you next time. One, two, three. Oh uh, yeah. Today, uh, we are talking all about something that is very near and dear to our hearts, the real life way. And the real life way is our method that we help learners from all around the world to improve their English. We've talked about this on other podcasts and it's actually something that we've, you know, we know it at our core, but we're kind of defining and coming up with a framework so that we can better explain it to other people, better use it to train new teachers or new team members, better use it to create content and courses and things like that. We've been working on this a lot the last 